Hey Toy Fans, I'm D21 Beast and welcome back to my figure review series here on my YouTube channel. And today we've got a pair of figures for you from the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy line. We've got Rocksteady and Bebop by Playmates released in 2014. Now right now these figures are exclusive to Walmart but they will be coming out in other toy retailers starting at the beginning of 2015, but I had to get my hands on these guys just as soon as I saw them. I'm excited to review them. I thought these characters were great from the 80s cartoon, and I'm excited that they're coming into the modern version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series. Well, let's get things started by taking a look at the packaging for each one of these figures. As you come down the front of the packaging on each one of these figures, you will recognize that Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo. There is the familiar purple and green deco, and then each figure is housed in a blister bubble that does house the figure itself and their accessories. On the right hand side you got an image of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the TV show. And then lastly at the bottom you have the name for each figure. We've got Rocksteady, the rock-headed rhino, and Bebop, the pig-headed mutant. Flipping these boxes around now. As you come down the back of the box you once again have the familiar Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo. You do have the bio for Rocksteady on the back. Go ahead and pause now to read that. And the bio for Bebop. Go ahead and pause now to read that. And then finally, at the bottom of these boxes, you do have a complete lineup of all the figures currently available in this wave. Alright guys, well that's the packaging. Let's get Rocksteady and Bebop out of their boxes and see what they're all about. Alright toy fans, here we have Rocksteady and Bebop out of the packaging. And just looking at these guys, I keep hearing in my head, Stop Toidles. I don't know if you saw the original cartoon, but that's kind of how they referred to the Turtles. I'm sure this interpretation of these guys is going to be drastically different from what we got in the 80s and 90s. But I'm still just excited to have these guys out of the packaging and see them together. I mean, this is really cool that we have these figures coming to the new show. But let's get to that painting and articulation and the sculpting and all that good stuff that we get to these guys with. Uh, starting off with the Bebop figure here, um, I think the head sculpt on this guy is absolutely fantastic. I like the sort of warts or the, the pock marks here on the, uh, the figure's head, which is really great. I like the way they've done the mohawk here. I like the way he's got his sort of visor glasses and even the snout sculpted here. And I think the painting is pretty good for a Playmates Turtles figure. As you come down the figure here, you're going to see that he's got some additional sculpting around the chest. He's almost got these Tron-like lines on his body, as well as on his hands. Now, there's actually sculpting all over the figure with more line work that's not painted, despite the packaging photos showing it being painted. So I'm a little disappointed that this figure didn't get completely painted and released to the market the way he was originally intended to. But... Uh, he's got a really great outfit. I think he has that sort of electronica punk look to him, and it looks absolutely great with this guy. Now, Rocksteady, excuse me, Bebop, has a strange function on the back of this figure. He's got a wheel right here, and then he's also got wheels on his heels. So, on the box, it shows him sliding on his back on a wall. Now, I don't know. He slides okay. I don't know if that's going to be relevant to his appearance on the show. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but it's kind of a strange and interesting feature there. But I'm a big fan of the way this guy's sculpted and painted. Rocksteady looks absolutely fantastic as well. Look at all of that texturing on the skin. I like the way that they've done the blue eyes, the gold tooth. They've painted his, uh, his tusk or his horn here. Uh, his teeth are painted. As you come down the figure, you're going to see that he's got some nice gold paint on the shoulders and on his belt or bandolier here. Now on the box, the packaging for the figure does show that this uh, sort of block in the back of his hand with the sickle is painted gold and that this one with the hammer is also painted gold. I guess they decided to change their mind there on the uh, retail release of the figure. But then we come down here and he's got his camouflage pants just like Rocksteady had on the old cartoon and in other incarnations of the character. And then we got some more of that great sculpting detail on the feet there. So overall sculpting on these guys is top, top notch and I really like the way that these guys have both been painted. Moving on to accessories, you can see that Bebop and Rocksteady come with the items that you see here. Bebop has got these sort of little black um, bombs, I guess they are, or grenades of some sort that uh, he can hold as weapons. Now the flat disc-shaped grenade actually fits really well into both of his hands. Of course, now that I say that, I won't go into this hand here, but there we go. He can fit that into his hand pretty nicely. But this other sort of egg-shaped grenade or bomb or whatever this is doesn't really fit that great into his hand. You can kind of shove it up from the bottom, but I just don't like the way it kind of holds and sits there, and I'm actually having trouble right now even getting it into his hand. Not a big fan of this accessory, but I do like this one that he comes with. Rocksteady, on the other hand, has a classic Russian hammer and sickle. And you'll notice on the back of his hands here on the sculpting that he's got a uh, sickle or a hook that's been sculpted on the back of the hand. So I'm going to assume that he's supposed to hold the hook in this hand. And let's go ahead and put it in there. And it fits pretty nicely. A nice snug grip there. And then on the other hand, he's got this hammer sort of sculpted detail there. And you can just go ahead and fit this hammer right into that hand, and this one's a little bit tighter, just kind of push it and pull it and get it in there. There we go. So there's Rocksteady with his weapons, looking pretty menacing, especially with those armored shoulders. And then we've got sort of the Tron Punk Techno Bebop with his bomb accessories. 
So a great set of accessories for each one of these figures. Well, except for maybe the egg bomb. Moving on to articulation, you're going to notice that Bebop got a lot more love in that department than Rocksteady did. Bebop has a head that rotates a full 360 degrees, really nice. He's got a uh, hinged shoulder that rotates all the way around, as well as bending out and up from the body that far. He does not have any sort of elbow or wrist articulation. Kind of wish he would have had that, but you don't typically get that with Turtle Villains. He rotates completely at the waist, which is nice. And he's got a hinged hip, so his leg can move forward that far, move back that far. It rotates a full 360 degrees. And then he's got a single jointed uh, knee there on the figure. No ankle articulation, but again, not standard for turtle villains. But a great range of articulation on this Bebop figure. Really, really happy with that. Rocksteady, on the other hand, has got more of a basic sort of articulation package, I guess you could call it. His head does rotate a full 360 degrees. His shoulder rotates 360 degrees. It's a little bit hindered by the sculpting on the legs for this figure, but you can just rotate it back. But there is no hinge to bend out. There is no elbow articulation. But he does have wrist articulation that swirls all the way around. He's got waist articulation that swirls all the way around. He's got uh, hips here that are a little bit different from Bebop's. They are on a sort of flat, just twisting hinge. I mean, this is like classic 90s, really early 90s or 80s toys. I mean, not a lot of movement there. Uh, no hip, or excuse me, no knee joints or no ankle joints. So Rocksteady is kind of getting the short end of the stick here. Height-wise, we can see that Bebop and Rocksteady come in at uh, a bit over four and a half inches tall. Bebop's closer to four and a half. Rocksteady's closer to five. For some size comparison, here we have Bebop and Rocksteady compared to the Battleshell Michelangelo, Battleshell Raphael, Battleshell Leonardo, and the tallest Battleshell figure, Donatello. Here they are seemingly dwarfed by Shredder. I'm not sure how show accurate that's going to be. And finally, here they are compared to the 6-inch scale Marvel Legends Infinite Series Wolverine. Ha! Huh. Stop me if you heard this one, bub. A warthog, a rhinoceros, and a wolverine walk into a bar. <laughs> Alright, toy fans, well that's my review of the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Bebop and Rocksteady figures released by Playmates in 2014. Overall, these figures are a must-have for your Turtles collection. It's not like you need my video to tell you that. They're part of the original Ninja Turtle cartoon. They're quintessential Turtles villains. It's awesome that we're going to get them on the new show. So definitely run out there and pick up these figures. Remember that they are exclusive to Walmart until about 2015, when they should start showing up on other toy retailer shelves. Now, if you had to pick just one of these figures, or have to start with one and wait on the other one, I would say definitely go ahead and pick up Bebop first. He's got a better range of articulation, and I personally am a big fan of the way the character looks, his general character design, if you will. Rocksteady is a great figure too, but he's kind of lacking in the articulation department that does hinder the enjoyment of the figure just a little bit. But you definitely have to get both of these guys. There's really no question about it. Well, thanks for watching this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw here, please feel free to rate, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Cowabunga!